الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم اما بعد one of the well known great scholars from ahl sunnati wal jamaa in this time may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve him Shaykh Rabi bin Hadi al-Madkhali, hafizhullah ta'ala, was asked a very nice question regarding the state of the Salaf during Ramadan. So I thought this would be something beneficial to share and jazala khairan to the family that translated this from the fatawa of the Shaykh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and have mercy upon them for their benefit. So the question was, a questioner is asking about the state of the Salaf in Ramadan. The Shaykh Hafizullah Ta'ala, he answered by saying, in answering this question I say that the state of the noble messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Ramadan is well known and he used to prepare for this month by fasting more in Sha'ban. As is narrated in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, that he sallallahu alayhi wasallam used to fast all of or most of Sha'ban. Then he sallallahu alayhi wasallam would fast in this noble month of Ramadan and exert himself even more so in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, letting us know that the last 10 nights of Ramadan is of course, in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, a time when we should strive our most to make Qiyam Al-Layl and try to get Laylatul Qadr bi-idnillah and make dua to Allah and ask, seek His forgiveness and His favor. Tabarak wa ta'ala. When the last ten nights entered, he would exert himself in worship and tighten his waist wrapper, meaning to exert himself uh, in worship. He would perform ittakaf, meaning he would stay in the masjid. And his wives would too, and many of his, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, radiallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in, companions, would also make ittakaf. So many of the companions of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, letting us know that this is the fi'l of the salaf, of this ummah. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would establish these great actions of fasting perfectly, performing good deeds and showing goodness and sacrifice. The Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was extremely generous. He was the most generous of people and when Ramadan came, he alayhi salatu wa sallam was more generous than a wind that had been sent. And more so if Jibreel was sent as is narrated in the hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu ta'ala anhumah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would recite or present the Quran to Jibreel once every Ramadan. And in the last year of his noble life he recited the Quran to Jibreel twice as is narrated in the hadith of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha uh, 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 and Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhuma. This was the sign of his sallallahu alayhi wasallam imminent passing away alayhi salatu wasallam. So the Salaf held a special concern for this great month of paying attention to reciting the Quran, increasing in the remembrance of Allah, abstaining from sins, as fasting necessitates all of these things. So that's imperative. Our fasting is not just uh, uh, restraining from food and drink, but it's restraining from sin, sinfulness. And may Allah forgive us and bless us and accept our fasting. Fasting is not merely abstaining from food and drink. Indeed, it is a way of refraining from all that Allah the Most High and the Most Blessed hates in terms of sins. Fasting is also turning in obedience to Allah. So in fact, fasting is the meaning of taqwa. And as we know, as we mentioned on countless occasions, the ayah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses the believers, Ya yu al-ladheena amanu kutiba alaykum siyam, kama kutiba al-ladheena min qablakum la'alakum tattakoon. O you who believe, fasting is prescribed for you, similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you, in order that you gain taqwa. And so that's what the shaykh here is talking about, that taqwa Allah azza wa jal. So the Salaf held a special concern for this great month of paying attention to reciting the Quran, increasing the remembrance of Allah, abstaining from sins, and fasting necessitates all these things. Fasting is not merely abstaining from food and drink. Indeed, it is the way 
it is a way of refraining from all that Allah the Most High, the Most Blessed, hates in terms of sins. Fasting is also turning in obedience to Allah Azza wa Jal and to have a class sincerity for Allah in this action. May Allah be pleased with the Salaf of this Ummah. It is said of Malik that he would teach the people and when Ramadan approached, he would free up his time for fasting and reciting the Quran. Thus you should give importance to reciting the Quran in this noble month along with reflecting upon it and pondering it and to take heed of the admonition and take heed of that which is rebuked and comprehend the halal and haram and the clear understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's threats and promises and things of this nature from the noble Quran and with this the soul is purified and hearts illuminated so again this is a way of tazkiyah to nafs is doing all this Ramadan is that time to purify your soul to work on that purification that we had just spoken about in the previous sitting. This illustrates to us that the Quran is life and light and guidance for us as Allah Taala has described it as such. And we have sent to you Rahan in inspiration and mercy of our command. You knew not what is in the book nor what is faith but we made it a light wherein we guide whosoever of our slaves we will, and verily you are indeed guiding mankind to the straight path. So the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his sunnah was guiding us to the straight path. The Quran guides us to the straight path, and it is a light. Regarding the way of the righteous Salaf, you should read about their striving, their patience, and their sincerity for Allah. How they exceeded in their efforts in this noble month and other months. That is to say that we would do not only remind ourselves, that we not only remind ourselves of performing these actions only in the month of Ramadan, and then become heedless and forsake our obedience to Allah in the remaining months, meaning that we should not do these things. On the contrary, we would continue to stand in the night with prayer and continue to worship Allah and turn to Allah in addition to all the other acts of worship in order to gain closeness to Allah in Ramadan. Ramadan, we should not be heedless. So continuing the beautiful acts that we're striving to do during Ramadan, we should continue them after Ramadan, striving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to come closer to Him. Some people turn in obedience to Allah in this month, and once it is passed, they fall short, become lazy, and forget many acts of worship. No, there is no doubt that we should have more concern in this month than in any other months. However, we must remember Allah continuously throughout the year and throughout our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya yuladina amanu, hathkurullaha dhikran kathira, wa sabbihu bukratin wa asila. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, remember Allah with much remembrance and glorify His praises morning and, and afternoon, meaning the Fajr and the Salat al Asr prayer. Therefore, the believer remembers Allah wa ta'ala continuously, obeys Him, has taqwa of Him, and has khushu, humility, humility of Him, and awareness of Him in every hour of this life. I beseech Allah to grant us and you the ability to perform the night prayer, fast, and all that which is obligatory upon us in this noble month, and grant us eagerness and zest regarding its virtues. I also beseech Allah to grant us the ability to continually, continuously uphold His obedience and turn to Him upon that which He pleases Him. Verily, our Lord hears the supplication. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.